today. Leave comments below if you have any questions. And I look forward to seeing you in the next video. Subscribe if you haven't subscribed. So I'm excited about today's topic. So today we're going to be talking a little bit more about what to do if your family hates you. So this is going to be, if you have subscribed to my channel, you um, there's a good chance you've watched the first video uh, that I put out on how to handle it and what to do if your family hates you. So this is the second part to that video, uh, uh, to the what to do if your family hates you video. And this comes in large part um, from you know, some of the questions that I got in, rela in relation to that video, uh, and also some of the counseling sessions that I've done so far um, that have a lot to do with this topic. Either that or um, I have just people asking um, more and more questions as it relates to this topic. So, now, the first thing that I do want to be sure to say and caution you on is if you do believe that your family hates you, the first step you're gonna want to take is to confirm. So um, I know that you, at this point, you probably feel as though you have really good reasons for why you believe that your family hates you. And I do not doubt that uh, these are concrete reasons or valid reasons. However, I would be doing you a disservice if I didn't caution you on what the true first step should be when dealing with these, this type of situation, right? So as human beings and as beings that tend to see things largely from our perspective and tend to find it very difficult to see things from other perspectives, or accurately empathize with other beings on where they might be coming from, myself included, uh, it is essential that when it comes to these types of topics or these types of important topics, we confirm, right? So what's the definition of confirm? Like we need to make sure, so we need to make sure that we appropriately establish what the truth is. We you know, we don't want to be operating based on a standpoint of, you know, my family hates me. And then in reality, that might not be the case. You might just, um, you know, you might potentially be misunderstanding the situation, uh, you know, or th there just might be things that you don't know or you're not aware of. So I want you, I want you to be able to see what that definition is. And I think that'll be a better, um, that'll be a better uh, font overall. So the first thing we wanna make sure to do is to basically confirm that our sentiments are right. And the only way to do this is to actually ask the, the, the individuals, to actually ask the individuals that are involved with the situation uh, the specific and direct questions. Uh, you know, and I think that this is the hardest part for a lot of people because, you know, they might perceive that their family hates them because their family makes fun of them all the time, or they, they get hurt by some of these jokes that their family tends to make, and they don't really understand, you know, why their family says things that um, essentially just end up hurting their feelings, and they want to be okay with, you know, some of the types of jokes, some of the things that are being said, uh, and so they act like they're okay with it, but in reality, it's something that's eating them up inside. It's something that is hurting their feelings. And so the first step before anything else is to address this directly with the family members involved. Now, I will say this, in my previous, previous video, in my first in the first video that I made as, as it pertains to what to do if your family hates you, I feel like I was fairly clear or I tried my best in being as clear as possible when communicating what those next steps could potentially be and should be. But for some reason, it's like some people still ended up with the question, well, what do you actually do? So we're going to get to that in a minute again. Um, but the first thing that I want you to do 
actionable item, take notes if you need to, is you need to have a direct conversation with every member involved. Whether that's having a conversation as a group or as a unit, because a family is a structural unit, uh, like any other group, um, not like any other group, but similar to any other group, that's the first step. Either, either you do it as a group or you have those conversations and those direct conversations on an individual basis. So one-on-one -on -one conversations. And the communication needs to be clear. So you need to make it clear that you feel like they hate you. This can be, this is tough, you know, this is the, the but that's the first step. It's very tough, but it's the first step. And excuse me, you guys, like I know most of my videos, I don't have makeup on. And so it hasn't changed with this video. And in some, when I'm lucky, I do. But uh, I'm doing this fairly early in the morning. You know, so we take what we can get. But anyways, I want you to confirm that is the very first step. That's the first thing I want you to do uh, before anything else. Because what often happens, and I know that you might be sitting there thinking, that's not the case for me, I know it for sure. But what often happens is because there are so many different perspectives that individuals can come from and so many different ways of thinking that individuals can have, uh, we're often just misunderstanding each other. And it's often a communication block. So it's not often the case that l your family literally hates you. And that's like literally what's happening. Most of the time, it's a misunderstanding. It's a communication block. It's, um, it's, it's basically communication gone wrong. So the first thing that we need to do is straighten that out and be very direct about how we feel and give examples about why we feel that way of like behaviors that you've noticed or that have happened, events that have happened, things of that nature with the individual that we're having this, this challenge with, this issue with. Because we need to be able to get a response from them to very accurately determine beyond a doubt, beyond a reasonable doubt that um, this, these individuals actually hate us. And so for some of you, it might end here because you might get clarity on what the actual sentiment is, and you might get better understanding of where the other individuals are coming from and what the deal is when it comes to that, right? So for example, if your family always makes fun of you for being, because they consider you fat and they always make jokes in relation to that, then you would want to start out by saying, and let's say the members of your family that do that are your mom and your brother and your sister. You want to sit down and have individual conversations and direct conversations with your mom, your brother, and your sister and say, I feel like you hate me. And this is the reason why. It's because you call me fat and piggy and you call me names that hurt my feelings. So I'm trying to understand the reasons why you A, call me those names, and B, why you hate me. And you have to be direct because you're looking for a concise answer. Um, so that's the first thing that I want you to do. Uh, and I want you to listen to what those answers are and try your best to understand what it is that they're saying. Ultimately, the goal is to come to a conclusion that works for the both of you. So if they say something to the effect of, I don't hate you. I just thought it's funny. I just think it's funny and I'm just joking. Well, you need to be very clear about the fact that you don't consider that to be funny. It's not funny. Please stop. Don't, don't ever do it again. Okay. And then if they do it again, you have to like call them out. You have to continue to call them out um, and continue to address the fact that you feel like they hate you. What's the deal? You know, so that's the first step. And I don't want to drag on too long on that step because I do want to move on to the next, um, to the next step. So once you've confirmed, and let's say that you've verified, and this is in fact the case as far as um, your family hating you, then step number two will be to um, take steps in addressing that situation. So what most people do, you know, it, immediately or simultaneously as 
soon as they feel like their family hates them, they tend to withdraw and keep to themselves. They don't talk as much, they don't share as much, um, you know, and as a result, they tend to start feeling more isolated, more lonely, um, less supported. So we're gonna need to go the complete opposite direction with this. So once we've confirmed that our family actually hates us, in reality, they have literally told us, we don't like you or we hate you because X, Y, Z, you know, then we need to make a decision. Man, this always happens to me, it's so annoying. So we need to make a decision from there, right? So when I say make a decision, you need to essentially reprioritize, right? So it depends on where you are in your life, essentially. If you're a teenager, if you're 13, 14, you know, up until 18, you are more likely to be more in a position of being having to be more dependent on your family. And if, but if you're older, 18 or older, or you've moved out, you have a job and all these things, then you don't have to, you're not, you don't have to be as dependent on your family. So we have to make a decision as to how much we, how much impact our family needs to have. Notice I say needs and not wants, right? How much impact does our family need to have in our lives? Not want, because obviously left up to most, if not all people, we would want our family to have the most impact that they possibly can in a positive way. However, we've established that with this particular situation, your family dislikes you, your family hates you, they have confirmed that. So now we need to determine how much impact does my family need to have in my life uh, versus whatever the wants might be. And once we've determined how much impact our family needs to have, then we need to start um, taking action based on that. So for example, if you're a teenager and you've determined that, well, you know, I still have to live at home because I'm not working, I need food and I need all these other items, then, you know, you might want to make sure that you're prioritizing the amount of contact that you have with your family uh, to solely include what you need versus fully putting, um, putting your family in a situation where they're able to, uh, essentially dictate how you feel about yourself. So what comes into play the most, uh, and I tell clients that I do counseling with, is um, your, your cognitive abilities, your cognitive strength. So if you don't already have this, you'll need to work on strengthening your cognitive abilities and your cognitive strength. And what does that mean? That means you'll need to work on uh, certain characteristics such as self-confidence. You'll need to work on um, strengthening your, your perception of yourself, you know. So one thing that really, really helps with doing this is separating the behavior from the individual. So if you did something that offended someone or did something that wasn't right or considered as right, then that's a behavior. That's, that doesn't make up who you are. That doesn't define you. Only you can decide who you want to be. And from there, take actions every day to become the person that you want to be. The only way to survive in a situation where you're having to depend on your family for most of everything, like the, the security, shelter, the um, you know, base level psychological needs is to strengthen it, is to work on strengthening your cognitive ability. And that includes strengthening 
your self, your self perception, the perception that you have of yourself, um, increasing your confidence level and knowing how to separate behaviors from the self, because ultimately those are two different things. If you exhibit, if you exhibit certain behaviors that doesn't make up the entirety of your being, right? And if those behaviors were not appropriate, were incorrect, then we can take accountability for that, take responsibility for that and work on becoming better, but we don't have to let it define us. So decide what our level is. Now, if you're a little bit older, then you can detach yourself a little bit more from your family. And I hate to suggest such a, an extreme measure, but sometimes it becomes necessary because the key is this, realizing that you cannot control the behaviors or thoughts of others. So what does that mean? That means a lot of times all of you are asking me, you know, to answer questions such as what do I do if my family hates me? Well, think about that question for it for like two seconds, right? Take some time to really ponder on that question and think about what it is that you're asking me to answer, <laughs> essentially. I mean, seriously. So think about that. What do I do if my family hates me? What are the words that make up that, that, complete, that complete question? What do you do? You, there's nothing that you can really do, right? To change the mind of someone else or to change their behavior towards you. You can't actively force anyone to do or think anything. That person is gonna formulate their own thoughts, their own opinions uh, based on what their perception is. So you need to realize and understand that if you continue to ask the question, what do I do when my family hates me? Um, you know, that's, that's creating a cognitive dissonance um, within yourself because you're going to put yourself in a position where you're always feeling less than you're always feeling like you can't, um, you know, you can't measure up to what needs to be done in order to get your family to like you. When in reality, you just need to realize that it's not possible to actively change another person's per perspective or thoughts, right? That person is going to formulate their own thoughts and perspectives based on what their perception might, whatever their perception is or might be. So that's the first thing to realize. And from that, you need to realize the only thing left for you to actually do is work towards being a better individual and works to work towards being the individual that you want to be. That's all you can do. And from there, you know, um, typically people will be able to notice the actions. People will take notice of that and see that. And, you know, a lot of times they might come around, you know, based on what they're seeing and perceiving. And sometimes they might not. So again, if you're a little bit older, I hate to suggest perhaps the detaching yourself a little bit more from the, from the interactions that you have with your family, especially those interactions that tend to cause the most conflict. Um, or if they dislike you, then this is something that you might want to consider doing because what you don't want to do is put yourself in an environment to feel or to continuously feel like you're less than. It's not a productive relationship. And every relationship that we have, even friendships, um, spouses, um, the good needs to outweigh the bad. It needs to be a productive relationship. And if it's not, then it's not doing anything to add to your value. It's not doing anything to add to your life overall. So you need to make a decision on 
essentially, you know, how much involvement you need to have with your family in any events that they might partake in, anything that might happen in, 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 in that, from that standpoint. Uh, but again, I want you to start with a conversation. I want you to give the individuals within your family a chance, right, to explain or to further clarify or to, um, you know, perhaps find a compromise with whatever the situation might be before taking this extreme measure. But that's one of the most important things that I want you to be aware of is there is no, what do I do? You need to rephrase that question because what people don't realize is every little thing down to the words that we use to phrase questions or things that we tell ourselves affect our psychology. And it affects the way we think. It affects how much we're able to do for ourselves and how much we're able to think for ourselves as well. So we need to phrase questions in more productive ways that better illustrate what we're attempting to communicate or what we're attempting to achieve. And so when we ask questions like, what do I do? I mean, there's a dissonance there because there is nothing you can do to make someone else like you or to change someone else's mind. If they don't want, if they don't want to change their mind, they're not going to change their mind. It's as simple as that. You can present new evidence, new information, just make them aware um, and just give them that information that is fair, but you can't force anyone to do anything. So you need to realize that you cannot control the behaviors or thoughts of others, and you need to create a healthy amount of, um, how do I say this? boundaries. <laughs> My family hates it when I use that word because I use it a lot with them too. And I'm like, you know, because sometimes I just feel like, mm, I feel like there's just not the, 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 the appropriate amount of boundaries with some things when it comes to even my family. So um, they, they, they don't like that word, but that's what it is. It's creating the appropriate amount of boundaries between yourself and individuals that might be creating a more toxic environment within your life than needed. So with that being said, notice that from step one to step three, all of these things involve you taking proactive action and taking more responsibility for the way you think, the way you um, communicate, uh, the actions that you choose to do. So unfortunately, there is no magical spell that you can cast on your family members and they will automatically start to like you. The first step is to focus on yourself and the, to sit down and truly think about what type of human being you'd like to be and truly start working towards those things. So essentially, the actions that you take the things that you think, the things that you say will ultimately be actions that you're proud of, regardless of what anybody else thinks about those actions. The things that you say will be things that you're proud of, regardless of what anybody else thinks of those things. The um, beliefs and values that you hold are things that you're proud of, you're sure of, regardless of what anybody else thinks, including your family members. Because ultimately, again, there's no way we can proactively change somebody else. The change must start with yourself. You can only change yourself in the way you view things and the way you go about operating within this world. So with that being said, you know, um, step four is essentially learning to be happy with yourself and your growth. So, that's the first time I get it right, right? Okay, so yes, step four is essentially learning to be happy with your growth, learning to be happy with yourself, um, and ultimately coming to a, a place where, you know, regardless of what anyone might think or regardless of what your family thinks 
you're confident enough in yourself and the actions that you take and the decisions that you make to where it doesn't have as much of a psychological impact. And that's ultimately the goal. Because we are talking about family members, that's gonna psychologically impact you whether you like it or not, <laughs> most likely. Um, unfortunately, you know, that's the reality of the situation. However, how much it psychologically impacts us, how much effect it has on our behaviors and what we think about ourselves, because ultimately that's what's that that's that's what's bothering us is the fact that it makes us sad it makes us feel alone isolated detached from people that we should by societal standards have the, the strongest connections with so that's really what we need to tackle the issue isn't necessarily the fact that your family member hates you the issue is um the impact that that is creating on you and your life so essentially we need to tackle what the main and real issue is and so the only way we go about doing that is by you know all of the steps that we've discussed thus far and of course i will say these are more extreme measures these are more extreme measures. And I think that one thing that always helps as well, especially if you're a teenager stuck living, living at home, is you have to do step number one, hands down. You don't really have a choice. If step number one turns into an argument, then bring it up again at a later time. Don't let up. Don't um, let them wear you down on what you believe. Um, and essentially, that's really the only way of um course correcting behaviors um, from other people as far as how they uh, approach you or how they treat you not necessarily what they think about you but um at the very least we can train others on uh how to better approach us or how to better communicate uh with us so that's all I've got for this particular video. I feel like that ran a little bit longer than intended. However, I really did want to deliver this message because um, it's a part of the, you know, family series that I have going. And there most likely will be a part three dealing with a different aspect of this as well. Because I know that that's a major, major, um, that's just a major, major part of people's lives. So anyways. Thank you guys for joining me today. Leave comments below if you have any questions. And I look forward to seeing you in the next video. Subscribe if you haven't subscribed. Have a great day.